well, good afternoon, and I hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas. And today's video is very different from all my other ones. Not only is it a change of scenery, it's a change of clothing as well. Because of new tear fall restriction, I am not able to travel anywhere um, inside the UK. So I'm stuck in this beautiful city of Oxford, which happens to be my home. And today's video is not a landscape photography vlog as um, I normally do. Rather, it's a it's more or less a gear review. But I'm out in the field, so there will be a photograph, um, even though it's not um, a landscape photograph. It's, it will be a more of a cityscape. Yeah, so the, so the gear I want to talk about is this lens here, the 80 to 200 millimeters Nikkor F4 zoom lens, which I happen to love as a landscape photographer, but also there are some minor um, issues with it. So today I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of this, uh, this lens while using it to shoot um, this photograph of my home, the city of Oxford, and hopefully give you some idea of um, what this lens is capable of. If you've seen my last couple of videos, I've been shooting with this lens in the Lake District while on um, wild camping. I've been shooting with it in, in on summits when there are winds and in the valleys when there, you know, when it's raining. Um, so I think I've got quite a good grasp on this, how this lens performs in different conditions. But before I go into that, uh, let me just talk you through what I'm shooting today. Um, today's image is more or less a te another test for this lens. I I am stretching the limit to... The um... Good luck! Alright, cheers! Happy New Year! Thank you! Right, where was I? Um, Yes, so I'm going to take this photograph, which is more or less another test um, on this lens. So I'm stretching the limit of the um, of the focal length. I'm using 200 mil, which for most zoom lenses are not the sharpest point. But um, according to resources online and my personal uh, usage, this lens handles it absolutely perfectly so what i'm shooting at the moment is a panel of the dreamy spires of oxford if you've heard of that term about oxford so if, if you've been to oxford you know about all the turrets and the towers of different colleges they are like they're spiring into the sky and above all the other buildings and i don't know who invented the term the dreamy spires i think it's a he was a poet. I forgot the name of forgot the name though, but um yeah it's a beautiful city and um composition speaking is not uh, ne that technical because um it's just a panel of the vertical beautiful constructed architectures. And um, if there's anything there there's a group of trees um in the front of the buildings, uh, so I'm sort of using that as a foreground. But other than that, it's um, it's just another panel of, the, of Oxford. And we have a very foreboding cloud towards the west, which is not very ideal. But I'll just wait here and see if there's any lights, any um, any clouds catching the light. So the best quality of this lens is its quality. It's pin sharp all the way through all the whole range of aperture and the whole range of um, focal length, which is just unbelievable for a zoom lens like this. There are some drop off um, toward, towards the ends, but you can easily correct them um, in post processing. But compared compare to my kit lens that I had, the 24 to 120 one, 
this lens is an absolute killer. Another another pros of this lens is its build quality. It's, it was made in Japan and very very sturdy and robust built. Light, uh, there's some light I need to shoot this first. Right. Two second timer. Okay, that was the third set of photograph taken. What was, I, what was I saying? Yes, the the build quality of this lens is excellent as well. I had it, I had it on, on in the Lake District when there were rain and uh, winds, and yeah, it, um, it went through all of that. But the sky is very, uh, very pretty at the moment, so I decided to do a different composition. So I'm ditching the trees in the foreground. And, uh, so it's just uh, the spires and the fiery sky. So as I was focusing just now, I remembered another pros of this lens. On, on the newer lens we get, the focus ring doesn't stop at infinity, but this one does. And I can guarantee you that lens has the finest like infinity focus mark built into it so if you are shooting mountain in the distance don't even have to focus you don't even have to magnify on the viewfinder on the view screen i mean you just have to turn it all the way through and it's focused infinity for you um which is just absolutely brilliant and the third pros is um well this one is more of a personal preference it's just feeling of like mechanics um, inside this lens you get when operating it. Um, you just don't have that in um, newer lenses where you have to twist the aperture actually and you're actually controlling all the little um, wings or whatever you call them um, to shrink the aperture and to increase the aperture. To me, that is something I really appreciate. And now to the cons. Well, so the first one, which doesn't really bother me uh, very much because I shoot roughly horizontally all the time. So the focus ring of this lens doesn't stay where it is. When you're shooting upright or downwards, but that's not a problem for well, I think most of the landscape photographers. Um, not if you're shooting some intimate scene in the, in the lake shore or details in the grounds. Um, so that's not a huge problem for me, but it's one of the one of the things that might bother some people. And the other thing is. Because it's a vintage lens, it doesn't have image stabilization built into it. So that means when it's windy, when it gets a bit windy, when a when tribe is not very sturdy or a bit wobbly, um, the image might not be sharp. And that's partially what happens on, on Rosette Pike in the Lake District, happened to me a few weeks ago. Um, I did not realise that. Yeah, so if you're operating in um, windy conditions, this lens might not be the one to go for it. Um, but today we have absolutely fine weather. So, um, so this lens is perfect for these sort of conditions. The light is fading and I think that's it. I think I've um, been through them all. And in conclusion, it's um, this lens. <laughs> If you're on a budget and or if, if you want to practice your manual focus and manual adjustment skills that's the one this lens is the one to go for but if you don't really care about money um, just go for do go for the other ones the 70 to 200 for me is I'll, I'll keep using it definitely in the future trips right the lights gone and um, that's the end of the review I hope, I hope you find your own 
perfect lens for your landscape photography. And if you're in lockdown, a tier four, or as they call it, um, all the best and happy new year.